Hello and welcome back. This beautiful thing is Mort's Barge, a self-contained 4U modular synth that I've just finished building. It's an exact replica of a set of five Buchla 100 series modules that were used by electronic music pioneer Morton Sobotnik in the mid-1960s. If you're into modular synths, then chances are you're familiar with Buchla's music easel, or maybe you've got some of Tiptop's Eurorack versions of the classic Buchla 200 series. Well, before any of that stuff existed, there was the 100 series, which Don Buchla originally built for the San Francisco Tate Music Center around 1965. The original modules are incredibly rare these days since very few of them were ever made, but the Barcelona-based company La Sassenta e Siete, or LA67, has been producing faithful replicas of the circuit boards and front panels of all the modules in the 100 series. They had a special offer on the Mortz Barge panel and PCB set recently, so I decided to get my soldering iron out and take the plunge. If you want to know more about how I actually built it, or if you're interested in the history of this amazing instrument, I've included a few links in the description. But in this video, I'm just going to walk through the features of the five modules and create a few patches that show what it's capable of. Although by modern standards it feels pretty limited in a lot of ways, the range of sounds you can coax out of this thing is just incredible. Here's a quick taste, then I'll get stuck in. <laughs> Okay, so there are five modules in the Mortz Barge system. Uh, it's designed as a kind of st standalone, portable, all-in-one unit. I guess it's a bit of a precursor to the music user, if you think about it. Um, so the modules are, there's the 158 dual signed to sawtooth generator, or dual oscillator. There's the 110 dual voltage controlled gate, or VCA. Um, the 180 dual attack generator, or envelope generator. The 140 timing pulse generator, or clock. And then finally the 123 sequential voltage source, which is a three channel, eight step sequencer. Um, and I'll just talk through the features, um, and then I'll let you have a listen to the oscillator before I get into some patches. The 158 is very basic by today's standards. There's wave shaping from sine to saw. You've got two identical oscillators basically in this one panel. Um, you've got an FM input and you've got internal frequency control via the big knob or you can switch to external and control it via CV from the sequencer. And there are two audio outputs and there's audio input for the FM. Probably worth saying all the silver connectors here are audio. They're all, um, the way I've built this, they are built with um, three and a half mil standard Eurorack patch cable style connectors. Um, the BOM actually specifies Buchla style tiny jacks connectors, which are slightly different, very slightly bigger, but I thought there's no point adding another format into the mix for me. So I'm, I'm keeping it as a, a standard Eurorack style so I can interface it a bit more easily with other gear. Um, the other connectors, uh, the black bananas are for control voltage and the red bananas are for clocks and triggers. Um, yeah, the 110 voltage control gate, this is a super simple VCA. You've got audio input, a pair of outputs for each channel just copies of the same one, um, a CV input, and then these knobs are attenuators for that CV. The dual attack generator is a really simple attack decay envelope, um, trigger input, two CV outputs again, just copies of the same one for each channel, attack time and decay time, and then you can set the note, note duration um, internally with this knob, or you can switch it to be controlled by the length of the trigger, which is quite good, so you can kind of make the notes, the note lengths be determined by the length of the clocks, or set them, override that, and set it internally. Uh, the timing pulse generator is probably the most complex module here. Um, this is kind of, I guess, the 1960s version of Pamela's new workout. You have um, a couple of different modes. You've got single pulse mode where you can just advance it with this button. You've got start-stop mode where you use external triggers to start and stop it. That's not much use without another system, really, so I never really use that here. Um, and then you've got repetitive, which just kind of gets it cycling. Um, you can control how long those pulses are as a percentage of the period or you know the, the tempo 
and then the period or the tempo is controlled here so the um, you turn it up to make it go slower basically the higher the period the the longer the, the gaps between pulses uh, and what's really cool is you can CV control both the pulse length and the period. So you can use the sequencer to create rhythms which aren't regular and to create different lengths of notes, which is quite cool. Um, you've got two pairs of outputs, which are um, the all pulses output. That's They're both the same. That will just output every pulse of the clock. And then the pair of alternate outputs take it in turns to output the clock, which is pretty cool. And then finally, the, uh, the one, two, three sequencer. Um, three rows of eight values, and you can control the number of steps from two to eight with the big knob here. Um, there are pulse outputs for each step, so every time a step's active, it'll fire a clock. You can use bananas to kind of stack these to create rhythms, kind of or combiner. Um, you've got the input clock there, and then you've got three pairs of outputs. Again, just two copies of each sequence's CV output. So not a huge amount of controls, but there's quite a lot you can do with it um, when you start patching creatively. And I really like the kind of limitations it gives me to kind of force me to think outside the box a bit and think what can I patch where and what can I can control with what. Um, and yeah, you'll probably hear in the patches there's quite a quite a range of tones. Uh, before I get into the actual patches, I'll just let you have a listen to the raw sound of the 158 oscillator, which is a beautiful thing. Um, so I've got these plugged into this little preamp here from Ladic, which will bring them up from line to Eurat level. I'm just going to mix them in the Samara, which is my kind of utility um, wave, uh, mixer here. I'll be using this pod in the video with a couple of different effects in as well, just to kind of um, add a bit of spice to the sound, which is quite raw on its own. Uh, but this is the raw output of oscillator one, just the sine wave. And I've set it to internal frequency control so I can sweep. Now, I haven't calibrated this kind of super precisely. This won't track one volt per octave either. It's kind of, you know, it's a bit of a lawn to itself, really, in terms of tracking. Um, but you can sweep from sine to saw. No voltage control for that, unfortunately. There isn't the 258, but the 158, you're just limited to manual control of that. But we do have FM, which is where this system really comes to life. Let's just take a copy of oscillator B into the FM input there. And as I bring this up, there it is. And as usual with analog FM, you can find sweet spots, which sound harmonic. Or you can find these nice atonal bits in between, and you can get quite extreme. <laughs> So obviously when you're sequencing both these oscillators, maybe sequencing the depth of the modulation by using one of the gates, the range of tones is pretty huge. And it gets even huger if you start cross-modulating again with a bit of feedback patching. So let's go out of an oscillator A into B and FM that one as well start finding things get very unpredictable chaotic and noisy at extremes but you can also just give it a little little smidge and once you start combining that with the wave shaping you'll hear there's a pretty huge palette to play with. So let's get into a few patches. One thing the system really excels at is kind of atonal, strange, percussive, slightly melodic kind of loops. Let's just get this little sequence fired. So it's an eight step sequence with some pitch information going into oscillator one. I've got oscillator two set up to FM oscillator one. I've got the FM down at the moment. And to control the pitch of oscillator two, I'm triggering on the first step of that sequence a slower envelope with a long decay time. And I'm just putting that envelope straight into the pitch of oscillator two. So as so I bring up this FM, you can kind of hear that sort of following the, the curve of that envelope over those eight steps. And so bring up the FM. Keep the main envelope quite short. Now let's play 
with the envelope of the modulating oscillator. So this will control how quickly that pitch envelope completes. And you get even more percussive kind of sounds if you bring up this first wave towards the saw. So here's a patch I've set up that uses the two oscillators as two kind of independent voices. Um, I've got the two rows of the sequencer, rows A and B, controlling the pitch, and I've kind of tuned these in to be complementary sequences. They're kind of following the same pitches. The second one is upper fifth and upper octave sometimes, so they kind of work together quite nicely. Just tuned it in by ear. Um, but I'm using the pulse outputs for the individual stages of the sequencer to trigger the envelopes for the two voices, so they're not all just playing all eight steps. Um, let's just get it running. So this is the first voice I've got turned up, and I've just got the green cables here stacked into pulse outputs 1 and 5. And I've set the note duration on the envelope generator to just basically be long enough to contain that one note of each step. But if I increase the decay time, we start to hear the following steps that are after those triggers. So by playing with this decay time, we can control whether we hear the whole sequence or just those two notes or just the pairs of notes around there or whatever. Just the sine waves at the moment coming out of the oscillator. Let's just turn up the second one, which I've got on steps three and eight. And if I turn these both up a bit, you'll hear these two sequences complement each other a bit. So the tuning's not perfect. I've kind of done my best by hand, but it kind of sounds okay, I think. Let's add a little bit of granular effects from the Pladask Drad, just for some little kind of pitch shifty repeats. And let's add a bit of spring reverb. Just give it a bit of atmosphere. And now there's quite a lot we can do once we start playing with FM and wave shaping, as usual. So in particular, I'm going to just keep the second voice to those two steps by turning the decay time down, but let's bring in some FM. That sounds pretty cool. So you get some nice rhythmic interplay. And as usual, this FM just gives us such a big tonal range. Okay, in this patch I'm going to have one oscillator droning and I'm going to sequence the pitch of the second oscillator and then use that to FM the first one. Um, now with the frequency control on the 158, they're either both controlled externally or they're both controlled internally. You can't individually switch them. So what I've done is I've switched them both to external and I've set up a, an offset voltage by mixing two of the 5-volt off offsets from Samara um, to give me something in that kind of 5 to 10-volt range, which will not get up to the top 15-volt range, but it'll let me drone this oscillator at a pitch that I can tune in over here. Um, and then I've got a 6-step sequence, and the moment I've got the pulse length sent to internal, you can hear every step is basically the same length, but if I flip that to external, I'm using channel B, to sequence the pulse lengths and I'm letting the envelope be controlled by the trigger length so basically with this second row I can I can control the rhythm or the duration of those notes a bit which gives us a little bit more interest so like I said it's droning on this one note which I'm tuning in by Samara and then um, I've got the first row going to the pitch of the second oscillator so if I start to FM that Give it a little bit of reverb through Drad. So the only pitch changes are on the second oscillator, which will start to kind of impose themselves on the first one as that FM depth goes up. Now just flip back to the standard pulse length. Can you hear how much more interesting it is when we start sequencing those? Thank you. 
And I actually quite like in this patch, moving the wave up sort of halfway to soar. FM gives us this nice kind of little noisy bite to the start of the sound. So here's a patch that uses some external drums and uses an external trigger to drive the sequencer and trigger the envelopes. I've basically used the BeatStep Pro here with one of the drum channels. I've got a splitter cable that goes to two banana jacks, one to the ground and one into the trigger input here, which I've melted to the, the sequencer. And basically, if I've got 16th notes in on this channel and I hit, hit um, play, it just steps through this eight step sequence. And because I'm using an external sequencer, I can add a bit of swing. And I can also start skipping some steps in this pattern. So it's clocking it at a slightly irregular pattern now, which gives us a more interesting kind of cross rhythm when we start bringing in some other drum sounds. Let's give it a bit of spring reverb to give it a bit more space. And yeah, just a sine wave at the moment. I'm just gonna have a little jam. I've got the setup. We're just listening to the first oscillator, um, but I've got them both set up to cross-modulate each other to get some quite gnarly sounds. Pretty simple little envelope here. Let's have a little play. Oh, 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 oh,
So one of the cool things about the 140 timing pulse generator is this pair of outputs here labeled alternate, which basically take every other clock each, which means you can get some quite interesting patterns if you merge that with a seven step or an odd numbered um, note sequence and then fire the envelopes alternately on every other note. So they're basically firing every two clocks, um, but there's a seven step pattern going on. So you get some nice overlapping um, kind of polymetric action happening when you feed it, feed it to two oscillators. Um, let me show you what I mean. So here's a seven step sequence, two different ones on A and B, going to the two oscillators. So oscillator one is doing this. Oscillator two is doing this with its own sequence. And together we get this nice kind of counterpoint kind of effect. And it's quite nice to kind of just subtly play with these wave shapes, make them slightly different with each voice. Got a little bit of delay in the computer, and I've got this going through the endless processor from Blue Catch, which lets me just kind of freeze a bit of that audio to give us a nice kind of background wash. A bit like a reverb or something that just goes on forever, and if you hit the button. Okay, a different version of the texture each time. I've got the FM set up to cross-modulate each other again, and this patch sounds really nice with just a little smidge of it. That's just about it for this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed hearing some of the sounds this thing can produce. Leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, tell your friends and I'll see you next time.